Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and we're going to review the 2015 MacBook. This is probably my favorite MacBook in a very long time. I was pretty excited about this when they showed the Apple Watch and this. I was actually more excited for this, uh, and you may want to check out the Apple Watch review to find out why. But anyway, this is a really, really nice device. It comes in a little bit expensive, about $1,300 for the base model, which this one is, and goes up, well around 1700 or so, depending on which specs you get, you can get it up there pretty expensive. It comes in three different colors. This is the space gray model. You also have gold and silver. I really like space gray, so I stuck with that. It matches my iPhone, and I think it looks really great. Now, it's a 12-inch retina display, and it's a beautiful display, and we'll take a look at that in a moment, but look how thin this is. Let me bring this up here. You can see it's incredibly thin. In fact, here is an iPhone 6 Plus up next to it. And you can see it's only got a little bit more thickness on it than an iPhone 6 Plus. So that's that's pretty incredible. It's a whole laptop that's that thin. Comes in at about one and a half pounds or so. So it's a little bit uh, heavier than uh, what you would expect for an iPad, but it's extremely light for a, a MacBook. Now on this side, we only have a couple ports. We have some microphones, and then we have a headphone jack. This is also an audio in as well. On the other side, just one slot or one port, you've got USB-C. And this was a radical change for Apple. This is actually adopting a standard for Apple. It's not something they've done in a very long time. In fact, everyone else can use this same standard. They helped develop this along with Google. They have these on the Chromebooks. And this charges. It also allows data transfer. And this can work in pretty much anything. And I hope they bring that to the iPhone instead. Get rid of the lightning cable. Let's use a standard across all Android devices, all MacBooks, everything. I love the MagSafe connector, but I think the benefit to USB-C really outweighs that. Here is the end of USB-C, and it's really, really tiny. To give you an idea how small it is, here's the bottom of an iPhone 6 Plus, and really, you could see it, it could fit pretty much in there. They just need to change the slot slightly. In fact, it's about where that little metal bezel is around there. This should fit. So it's that small and then it fits in nice and firmly. So if we just click it in, it firmly clicks in. You don't have that benefit if someone trips on it. It will probably take your laptop with it, but it's really nice. It transfers pretty high data speeds uh, and also can charge quite a few devices. Now let's open it up and I'll show you what's different about it compared to other MacBooks. Now these keys were really one of the controversial things. Now this is a new mechanism where they have different types of keys. They got rid of the, uh, what they call a scissor mechanism that's in your traditional keyboard and changed it to what they call a butterfly mechanism, which makes the keys a lot more shallow. So let me bring this up here and show you just how shallow these are. So you can see these don't have a whole lot of travel to them. They don't move a whole lot, but you really start to get used to them after you use them for a while. So instead of having a lot of travel, it allows it to make the laptop thinner, but also they flattened out the keys. They made them bigger. So you have more key space or more surface area to actually hit. And when I tried to use my MacBook Pro that I added all my videos on, this really was the better keyboard. I used the MacBook Pro and I thought, wow, the keys are so small. They're tiny compared to these keys are a lot smaller in size, these are just a lot easier to hit, a lot quicker to hit, and you can just kind of type along really fast with them. You can bang on them like I do. Uh, depends on how you type, but that's, they're really, really nice. And you, it does take some getting used to because they have such a short throw. They're definitely not for the old school mechanical keyboard lovers, but they'll get used to them as well. I would say that the keyboard is not a compromise. It's, it's a big step up once you get used to it. The other thing they've made that's an improvement on this is the trackpad. Now the trackpad is a force touch trackpad. It actually doesn't physically move. It actually has a motor underneath it that makes it feel like you're clicking, but it doesn't really move. And in order to experience this, you really have to see one in person. They put them on some of the MacBook Pros also. But if you're around an Apple store, go in and touch these and then shut the computer down and push on it. You won't believe that it doesn't actually move. It has very little flex to it. In fact, let me show you here. There's not a physical button under there, but let's see. If I push here, you can see it pushes. There's a little bit of flex, but there's actually a couple clicks I'm feeling. So you can push it anywhere. It feels the same anywhere you push. 
it's really phenomenal and it's it's one of the best trackpads, if not the best trackpad I've ever used. Battery life in it is a solid day. I can get a good eight hours out of it, depending on what I'm doing. Believe it or not, you can edit video on this, and it's plenty fast. It's a, It sounds like a really slow processor, 1.1 gigahertz up to 1.3, I believe. Uh, this has 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage, but you can bump that up a little bit. And this also has turbo boost, so it speeds the clock up of the processor and then slows it back down. It's a Core M processor, and I thought it would be really slow, but it, it really goes pretty well. So we're in the Mac and it actually will run decent programs. This will run Final Cut Pro. It will run Photoshop. It will run pretty much whatever you want. I couldn't believe that it would really do that when I first started using it, but it really does it quite well. There's only a few issues when I've used it that I see a couple of hiccups and I can tell that the processor is speeding up and slowing back down. I can tell this when I use it and I'm browsing the web, and that's usually what happens. So I'm on Craigslist or something, searching for something, and I go to click in the search box, it stops and stutters for a second, and then it will go again. And I'll see if I can show you that here. We're at Zolotech.com, and let's see if we can get this thing to slow down at all. So we're scrolling, it's plenty fast, you'd expect that, no problems there. Let's see if we can click in the, in the search. Search Apple. Oh, I mistyped it, but let's try this. And it seems to work fine. And you would expect this part to work fine. So let's open let's open Final Cut. Takes a second to open. It's pretty quick. And I am screen recording at the same time, so I'm using the processor already. It's going to take a moment. So this doesn't normally take this long to open, but it's probably just taking a moment because this is screen recording also. So let's give it just a moment here. Here we have Final Cut Pro. Now I don't have a whole lot in here. I actually did dump in some some content. It looks like it must not be in here anymore. I dumped in some 4K content to see what it could handle. But let's just create a new project. We'll use custom settings. We'll set it up as 4K. We can even do 5K. We've got our new project. There we go. So let's drop something in the timeline. We'll just drop in the Apple Watch. This is just a shot here. We'll play it. It actually is fully usable. Now, I wouldn't want to do any serious video editing on this, any huge production, but I really could edit my videos on this no problem. One of the things I do find that's bad about it is the FaceTime camera. It's pretty ro low resolution, and that's due to the incredible thinness of this top. So the top is incredibly thin. Uh, the screen is incredibly good. Let me zoom in here for you. All of the icons look absolutely beautiful. Uh, you can't see any pixels really at all. It's probably the best looking retina display on a laptop right now. It's, it's incredible looking. Colors are vibrant. Everything looks really nice. And in fact, everyone I've ever shown this to has said, wow, that's an incredible screen. And they're not even necessarily people that uh, use Macs. They just said, wow, that's really an incredible screen. The MacBook is a little bit expensive right now. Uh, actually, it's really expensive, but I think what they'll do is they'll get rid of the air, and you'll see this come down in price. And you can see here, we only have a 1.1 gigahertz Intel Core M. It actually bumps up in speed quite a bit, and it's more than sufficient for the average person. Now, someone that wants to do some serious editing or serious ph photography or photography, uh, you want to go and probably get a MacBook Pro unless you want something for ultra portability. And the reason is, is you'll probably want those ports instead of buying $70 dongles that go in the side here and then bridge out from there. It would be much nicer if they would have put two USB-C ports, one on each side, but that's one of the compromises they decided to use. One of the compromises they made was not to backlight this logo just to keep it so thin. And hopefully this is about as thin as we'll get because they've made enough compromises at this point. I think we're, we should be done with that. But they've really made some steps forward. And this is going to replace the air, or at least the air will become what this is eventually. They've layered batteries in here, and the chips are incredibly small. In fact, the chipset is only right here, and there's no fan in this Mac. And I've never had it... Uh, overheat while using it. Now I did have it overheat because it was in a car for about 20 minutes that was really hot, pulled it out and said, hey, this thing's really hot. It let me know, but it was still usable. So it's nothing you can't, 
can't just do and use every day. I think most people that want this MacBook uh, know what they're looking for. This is going to be your average person's MacBook. Those that want to edit video regularly, our photographers, uh, probably are going to go towards the Pro. But otherwise, I think this is a phenomenal choice in laptop, and I would definitely recommend this to anyone. Uh, you may want to wait till the price comes down a bit, but this is a beautiful device, and it's a beautiful display. And unless you need a bigger dis bigger screen or some bigger specs, uh, I think you'd be surprised and pretty happy with this device. One final thing I forgot to mention is I used to use an iPad Air regularly. This has pretty much replaced it. So I was surprised, but I, I kind of decided to stick with the MacBook. I use this all the time. I use my Pro when I edit videos, and I use this basically as the, the iPad replacement, strangely. So unless an iPad Pro comes out and can do a lot more things, I use this quite often now. Let me know what you think of the new MacBook in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. Be sure to check out some of our other videos as well. We have three new videos every single week.